Hello and welcome to Discover D-Day, uh, an educational project based in Norfolk in England um, with a large collection of World War II items, mainly on the uh, US Army and the US Airborne from D-Day till the end of the war in 1945. Um, we have several artefacts that we'll be showing you over the next few months and making videos of those. Uh, the first one will be our footlocker display that we take around to schools and old people's homes all around the area, uh, exhibitions and that sort of thing. Um, we do reenacting of various different things within normally the 101st Airborne, so services of supply, we normally do uh, engineering, um, signals, frontline and various other bits and pieces like that. So you may have seen us at some other shows around the UK. So the Foot Locker display will be coming up in several parts and there's lots of nice little interesting artefacts and little stories to tell you. So enjoy. So this is our Foot Locker display. As you can see it's a museum in a box. It's an original box that's been restored slightly to preserve it. As you can see there's information on there uh, from its original to port transport of New York, port of embarkation, New York, New York. And it's got the serial number on there. And we have a uh, little Command Airways ticket on there and an original lock. This normally locks it up, but uh, we've just taken that off just to show you inside. So this is the foot locker. Every soldier would have had one of these to keep his uh, uniform and bits and pieces in. They wouldn't have had them on the front line, but they would have been then sent on to them later on. Okay, so let's open the lid and see what we have inside. There we go. So as you can see, we've got a letter there, the letter that was sent to the soldiers from Eisenhower on the eve of D-Day. A couple of bits of uh, information there, just the American Red Cross special tour around London and a little postcard that was sent to the soldiers welcoming them into the country. And then uh, over here, just a few pictures of a few movie stars and uh, some family on there. Okay, and then we have uh, all the bits and pieces that are inside a foot locker. Now these are basically parts of my collection. So these wouldn't be uh, the sorts of th things that they would have all had in the foot lockers, they would have had bits and pieces. Um, but there'll be some interesting bits and pieces in here. So, we have here a nice baseball. Obviously they used to spend a lot of time not on the front line, so a bit of playing around with the baseball there. Would have been used by the soldiers quite a bit. Um, rounds of ammunition. There would have been uh, several of these kicking around in everybody's foot locker. These are for the uh, Springfield rifle. Five rounds there, 30 calibre. Okay, put that on the top there. These are for the Garand rifle, and these are blue tipped, so they're incendiary rounds. And again, so there's eight rounds there in a clip, and again, eight rounds here. These are black, so these are armor piercing. Eight rounds for the Garand rifle. We'll be going into more detail about those in another video. So, a few bits of ration here, some nice peanut butter tin of that and then some dubbing for your boots uh, it's a water waterproofing compound very oily substance gives them a nice color as well we have here some morphine morphine serrets there we go these would have been as, used as painkillers on the front line we have here some uh, motion sickness preventative tablets now uh, these were given to the soldiers as they travelled across in the planes and on the boats and in the landing craft to Normandy. Um, they hadn't been issued before, so they didn't know what to expect. Um, they were basically a sedative, and a lot of the soldiers say that when they got over to Normandy, all they wanted to do was sleep, and that uh, was due to those motion sickness preventative tablets. We have here a little pot of insecticide louse powder. So a lot of the uniforms that they had were wool, so they would have used these to keep out the lice or indeed use them on their hair after a shower. We have here a little war department book. This 
would have all your information in it. It's a picture of me and fingerprints and information there. So a little ID card, um, little local class A pass for going out. And a parachute log record card. That would have normally stayed with the parachutes. Okay, moving on. We've got some Carlisle bandages here. These came in a metal tin and you could basically pull that tab there and it would pull off all the way around and then you could open it up and get your bandage. They also used to come in these types of packs, soft packs. And then they also used to come in carbol packs like that. This one here has had its tab ripped off. So you can actually open the lid, take that away, and then the bandage is here inside. Okay, that shows you that. And it has a little label on the back there. Put other side next to wound to make it nice and easy for the soldiers. There we go, a few of those. We also have here, I'll turn it up the right way, some anti-dimming ointment. This was to stop your gas mask from fogging up. Several different types in different containers. And uh, also one there, which is a fog-proof paste. And an OGI would uh, be without the stockings for the ladies. So I uh, had to have those in my foot locker. We then have uh, charmed sweets, little boil sweets that the soldiers used to have, just to remind them of home and everyday life items. Um, here we have a shaving container with shaving brush in there. Okay. We then have some zigzag shoe polish in the bottom there. We then have a razor here, so an Ever Ready razor. And you might uh, recognize the name Ever Ready. Um, that's because a lot of the companies in America during the war, they were put to making other items. So they used to make batteries, but then they uh, were put to work making shaving razors for the troops. This one here might be another name that you remember. This one is Colgate and Company. And this is a shaving stick. So that would have been like shaving foam. You would uh, mash it up in a bit of water and uh, use that on your face with the razor blades and then the shaving brush. Or the other way around. Here we have some dice so that the uh, soldiers could gamble while on the ships. And here we have some wound tablets. So if you're wounded in battle, you would take these out and an instructions there on the back. When hit, take all tablets, drink lots of water. If hit in the belly, do not take tablets or water. And there's three packets of those in there. We have a little kit here, which would have had your buttons, sewing thread, needles, and repair equipment in there. And uh, now, when the troops dropped into Normandy, they would have dropped in the dark, so they would have been very difficult to communicate. So what they did is they had these, which are called clickers or crickets. And there's two different types here. This little blue one was a little tiny toy. This is an original one. And this, so this gold one here is the sort of one that would have been made mainly in the UK for the troops on the build up to D-Day. So in the dark, you would have clicked the clicker and then you would have had a response of two clicks if it was uh, somebody that was on your side, your colleagues, or somebody in your uh, division. And then you'd be able to find them in the dark. Okay. So moving back to here, we have tears for tender feet, tender feet even. And uh, that's a little thing that the soldiers could put into the uh, water when they hot water when they got back after a long march. Some other little things in there throat sweets, got some anti-dimming cloths in a box, 
more rounds for your Garand rifle, some lubricating oil for your, for your rifle. Um, here we have a New Testament US Army Bible. Nice original piece in there with some artwork. There we go, that's dated January 1941. We'll then move over to this side here, where we have some uh, borax soap. Collect them borax soap there. We have uh, some Waldorf toilet tissue. So made for the US Army by the maker of Waldorf Scott Tissue, Scott Paper Company, Chester, Pennsylvania. There we go, that's what you would have had to, to do your ablutions with. Move those up to the top here, while we have a look at all the other items that are in here. So large first aid dressings. These are in a wax container, so you would have taken them apart and used them. We have here a harmonica. Again, so the soldiers could uh, entertain themselves. Something I must learn to play one day. We have uh, here a tourniquet. Again, that would have been in the first aid kit that they would have had on their helmets or on their webbing. That's to stop major bleeding. This is some. Uh, this is a German container. This would have had uh, anti-burn ointment in it. So it was used to sun cream, basically, by the American soldiers. But uh, whenever they used to find one of those, that was uh, very good to soothe any wounds or burns. This here is from uh, Camp Takara. And this is uh, in America, and this is where the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment trained on the build-up to coming over to Normandy, or over to the UK, first of all, and then on to Normandy. And this would have had uh, this, a comb inside, that tiny comb we can just see there. Okay, and a nail file as well in the back there. And that's the sort of thing that they would have bought in the PX station, which is the postal exchange stations that they would have had on every base. Have here some water purification tablets. There you go. Little tiny tablets in a bottle there. Original bottle. Everything here is original. Well, I say everything, there are a few items that aren't, but mostly these are original items. So here we go, this is a can opener. This is not original. A can opener in a little tiny packet in there. P38. And what have we got in here? We have some, oh, everybody used to smoke. So we have here some matches in a nice container. Original match book there, some matches. And then obviously at the PX, you would also be able to buy normal matches like this little containers. Move matches in for the officers clubs. This is a very famous one here to uh, warn the soldiers of uh, diseases. Very famous matchbook. And then this is for a hotel in Cherbourg. Box of matches. And some spare razor blades for the razor, for the shaving kit. There we go. Gillette razors. And next, next section, we have original shoelaces, different sizes. They would have obviously got through those quite quickly. So shoelaces there. We have here a matchbook. So slightly different to the other the matchbooks that you've seen before, um, but this is from President Roosevelt, USA. It's an enameled cover for your matches, which would sit inside there. Open it up the wrong way. There you go, matches inside there. Nice little souvenir there. We have here just a standard container. This would have been issued for cigarettes bits and pieces, anything that you needed. It's a general purpose container. 
more rounds because you can never have enough rounds. Maybe another tourniquet. Made by Geralt Brothers Company in Attleboro, Massachusetts. Uh, now the Americans used to like to get souvenirs from the soldiers that they used to meet, uh, whether that was patches or badges or guns or knives or anything like that. So this is a German eagle that somebody's picked up. So we mentioned obviously the matches before. Now these are the lighters that the soldiers used to have. So there's two different types here. Stainless steel, standard lighter. And then this one is a black crackle paint effect on it. So that would reflect less light, so it wouldn't uh, glint in the night and give away your position. There we go. Some old money, some British money. We have here. Obviously the troops were in uh, England for quite a bit of time, so they would have spent a lot of money in the English shops. Got some heaters here, some wood alcohol heaters. So on your rations, you would have taken the lid off this. There's a little tiny thing that goes around them, um, which sits on top in this gap. And then you would light this and you'll be able to boil a cup of tea or heat up your ration. A few of those in there. Another kit, which would have bits and pieces in. Cotton, needles, buttons, all that kind of stuff is in there. Got some cartridges there. That's for a nine mil. And then here we have some rounds. Now these are 45 caliber rounds. And these were used for the pistol, the 1911 pistol, or for the Thompson submachine gun. And then later on in the war, the grease gun, the M3 grease gun. But we'll have another video with all the weapons on later on. Little items again in here. Some ear defenders. Little tiny ear plugs. Original ones in a box there. And here we have a little compass. Nice little compass here. US Army compass. In its original bag. And again, for uh, having a bit of time off, the men used to uh, play cards. So there's a nice set of aviator playing cards here. And these were a gift from the American Red Cross. Some uh, Lucky Strike cigarettes, two different sorts. So these are the four pack, which would have come in with the K rations. And then we have here an original pack of Lucky Strikes in white. Still see a bit of tobacco under the cellophane wrapper there. Now they used to be green, so they normally were in a green packet, but because green paint was at Sean's short supply, they went over to white in these. And then we have Hershey's, Hershey's milk chocolate. Lots of that. And to try and keep healthy, they used to have these little tablets here, malted milk tablets. So that would give you some of your vitamins that you required. Obviously this sort of thing would come in the K rations. So they would be set menus with set amounts of vitamins, nutritional items that you needed for the day. There's three packs. They'll be covered in the next video. And these would come in the K ration packets as well. These are Nescafe coffee sachets. There we go of them and obviously you need to look your best at all times so set of hair trimmers similar things to you see in the barbers today which are mains or battery operated these are hand operated and then obviously some photographs of the girlfriend and uh, my favorite movie star there we go
and last but not least a comb every GI had his comb there we go so I hope that's given you an idea of the sort of thing that we have in our foot locker this is only the top section so uh, in the next video I'll be showing you what's underneath this uh, lots of interesting bits of paperwork probably won't be able to do it in just one video so uh, there'll probably be a couple of videos coming your way